curious about how green are electric cars? In this video, we'll delve into the facts without bias, exploring the sites to see what holds true. It's a complex topic, but we'll break it down succinctly for you. Let's get started. Let's examine why some people believe that electric cars may not be so environmentally friendly. One of the big issues is that the batteries for electric vehicles can actually be worsening the environment instead of helping it by making the engines of regular cars. In fact, these electric cars are loaded with much larger batteries than traditional cars, and to make them, we have to mine a mineral called lithium. In addition, the activity of mining lithium produces a significant amount of greenhouse gases, which are not favorable for the environment. Now, we have to find a sustainable way of doing this or else it will keep causing problems. Now think about this. In 2017, over a million electric cars were sold, and experts assume that the number of electric cars will grow to over 125 million by 2030. These are a lot of vehicles and a lot of batteries, which are made from lithium. Thus, it is like the demand for lithium is going up like a rocket. Here's something to chew on. The lifetime carbon dioxide emissions during the manufacturing of one electric car can vary from 8 to 10 metric tons depending on the size of the vehicle. That's a hefty amount. In addition to that, the bigger the car's battery, the more CO2 that goes into the atmosphere during its production. Some smaller electric cars might be still okay, with carbon dioxide emissions as little as 2 metric tons, but those big, long-range electric cars? This is responsible for up to 17 metric tons of carbon dioxide emissions. Contrast this with an ordinary regular car, which at a total of 7 metric tons of carbon dioxide during its production is the average. Quite the difference, huh? The process of manufacturing electric cars can be stressful to the environment. The majority of the global lithium, which is the main component of electric vehicle batteries, is from a place known as the Lithium Triangle in South America. They drill into the salt flats there to get the lithium, but this process takes up a lot of groundwater, which leaves less for farms and communities. Some places have seen mining companies use up most of the water. In order to produce the same amount of lithium, we need to filter a very large amount of brine. Cobalt, another battery material, is often mined through child labor. When electric car batteries are no longer efficient, recycling them isn't simple and storing them safely is also a complicated process when they can cause fires and explosions. The electric car industry is a novice one at present, so we believe it will be better for the environment as technology advances, but it will need a lot of work. Now, where do electric vehicles get their power? Today, in many places all over the United States, electricity is coal generated. Therefore, the same electric car in those regions might not be as clean as you would like to think. However, if you are in an area with wind, solar, or hydroelectric power, driving an EV is the equivalent of a high five to the environment. Lastly, the fact that the electric vehicles will be able to run even more efficiently with the increasing number of clean energy sources will be a major factor. Now, we'll be looking at electric cars in contrast with the well-known gas guzzlers, starting with their production. The average car releases about 7 metric tons of carbon dioxide when using the regular fuel. These activities include all stages from mining ore for steel to the last touches in the assembly process. It is cheaper than electric cars, but there are no more of those heavy lithium batteries and because car making has been made more efficient. Think about it. These car companies are the originators of the assembly line. When an average car is on the road, it will emit approximately 5.2 metric tons of carbon dioxide annually, which is the amount that is needed to cover 11,800 miles, assuming that the vehicle is driven at the country's average mileage. If we do this 100 times, this will be the equivalent of about 57 metric tons of carbon dioxide emissions. It's 7 from production and 50 from gas burning. Talking about gas, it's also got to be taken from a place in the same manner. The average US car is estimated to use about 500 gallons of gas each year, and every process involved in getting that gas to your car has an impact on the environment. It's a whole lot of work from drilling for crude oil to filling up at the pump. Therefore, there is much to ponder about how electric cars influence the environment when they are electric or gasoline powered. Let's begin the story of crude oil with drilling, whether it is on land or deep beneath the ocean surface. When we've got the oil, it's off to the refinery, where it is converted into gasoline and other stuff such as jet fuel, plastic, and even Vaseline. But here's the kicker, the entire process of refining releases more than just carbon dioxide but also methane and nitrous oxide. 
on a daily basis, an average of 95 million barrels of oil are produced, and as a result, refining this oil is responsible for a breathtaking 767 million tons of carbon dioxide emissions every day. Of course, a conventional car can emit 5.2 tons of carbon dioxide in a year, but please hold on to your seat. Oil refineries are much more aggressive and blaze through the harrowing 280 billion metric tons of carbon dioxide in the same time frame. Yikes, right? Alright, let's calm it down a little and say some numbers we can understand. For the lifetime of an average gas-powered car, it will emit somewhere around 57 tons of carbon dioxide. But check this out. Baby? It represents only 28 metric tons of emissions during that time frame. That's less than half. As the manufacturing of electric cars releases more carbon dioxide, they in the long run offset this by not emitting anything at all while they are on the roads. And it's also important to include the emissions from the power plants that power electric cars in this calculation, which brings the national average per year down to about 2 metric tons. So, here's the kicker. In the same way, on average, an electric car will become more environmentally friendly than a gas guzzler after approximately 6 months to 2 years of driving. And here it is. A coal power plant that charges up the most eco-unfriendly electric car is still cleaner than a greenest gas engine after some time. On top of that, electric cars can be used in areas with cleaner electricity sources such as wind, solar, and hydro. They're even more efficient. Let's tackle a few more myths. Let's tackle a few more myths, such as myth number one, the production of electric vehicles and the charging of them from coal-fired power stations release more emissions than the manufacturing of gasoline cars and the operation of them. False. In the long run, any EV beats any gas car in efficiency. Here's a handy app to calculate and compare emissions, proving that EVs come out on top. Myth number two, our electric grid can't handle the influx of EVs. Also false. Even if a quarter of the cars on the road were electric tomorrow, US electric grids could handle them without a hitch. There is something special about the rumble of a V8 engine, and your loyalty to your gas-powered Mustang is admirable, but let's face the facts. EVs have a smaller environmental footprint than gas cars, no matter how you slice it. If this video helped clear things up for you, I'm glad to hear it. And hey, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit subscribe and press that bell icon so you never miss another one.